Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on the time you are going to be watching and listening to this lecture. Uh, this lecture is part of uh, a knowledge management and innovation course, and it is the ninth lecture, lecture number nine, and the subject matter of it is innovation and innovation management. How organizations manage innovation. Remember that in the area of knowledge management we have knowledge creation, knowledge capture, knowledge sharing, and knowledge application something or a concept that cuts across these various subjects is creativity and innovation. Let's just go through some basic concepts and principles of innovation and start with the observation that innovation is so critical and so essential now in contemporary societies and contemporary firms and organizations. Innovation now has become a critical factor for success, for development, for competitiveness, for advancement. Uh, if you don't innovate, if you don't come up with something new and apply it, and apply it, you will vanish, you will disappear, you will not succeed, you will not be able to compete in an economy, in a market that is full of full of changes and full of new products and new uh, ideas and new means of fulfilling uh, people's uh, needs. In contemporary economies and contemporary societies uh, and due to innovation we have, and we should notice, that there are now firms, companies, organizations that are innovation intensive, that are innovation based. Their main resource for success and for sustainability, for continuing to be uh, successful in their markets. Uh, these organizations are uh, of very special nature, very special. We, let me just give uh, examples. The mobile, the mobile, the Facebook, the, the Airbnb, uh, Uber, uh, all the organizations that are based on continuously creating uh, new products or services and continuing uh, developing and updating and innovating in their uh, system of work, in their technology, in their methods of uh, operation, methods of uh, operation and practicing uh, their businesses. The domains of innovation, the domains of applying, coming up with something new and applying it, uh, are four areas, four basic areas. One of them is add the organization system, like for example, the strategy, 
managerial system, decision making system, various practices that take place across the various levels and various domains. We call this uh, system, system type of innovation. And we also have process uh, type of innovation. Innovation that apply to the technology, the means of uh, processing and creating value within the organization, within the organization. Uh, methods of production, for example. Uh, methods and uh, systems and, uh, uh, you know, frameworks uh, by which the organization uh, produces the product or the service it provides, or the logistics associated with uh, such uh, uh, technology. The third type of, of the third domain is product. Innovation in the product. Innovation in the product or service that the organization or the firm provides. Uh, for example, this provide 25 years ago. It wasn't like this. It was much simpler. It didn't have internet application. It didn't have Facebook. It didn't have WhatsApp. It didn't have so many of what we consider as something very ordinary, something uh, natural now. So, it is the innovation in the product, in the services that the product provides, in the functions that the product provides. Whether it is a product or a service. service. For example, if you go to uh, a restaurant now, and given the uh, corona pandemic, uh, Restaurants are not open, but you can take the telephone and call the restaurant and, and ask them to deliver, to deliver what you need. Uh, this is a change. This is a change in the service provided, rather than to be provided in the play, original place where the restaurant is located, the items that you need can be delivered uh, to you. Uh, the fourth domain is the channel or partner domain. Uh, introducing innovation in the supply chain, in the logistical phases and activities that you use to uh, deliver what you produce to uh, the market or to introduce innovation in the partners that you collaborate with the so-called uh, getting into strategic alliances with other firms with other uh, organizations uh, to enhance uh, your capability and to uh, create a win-win uh, situation, a situation through which the collaborating organizations or the collaborating firms would, all of them would benefit uh, from such alliance or from such uh, uh, collaboration. Okay, let's focus now on the nature of innovation. Hmm? And innovation is a new application 
new ID that you actually apply, you actually implement new knowledge, new knowledge, new creation that you actually implement to create value, to improve performance. That is the essence of innovation. Therefore, it is value enhancing. It adds to the value. It adds to the function of the product, the facilitation that it provides for the users. It may be cost, the innovation may be cost saving, may be revenue enhancing. You know, the various types of value, uh, value enhancing or value increasing. There are various types of innovation. There are incremental innovations, innovations that are introduced gradually, gradually, step by step. They take time, they go into gradual phases, eh? and there is a radical innovation of the so-called revolutionary innovation. Innovation that create accelerated change that impacts uh, on you know most of the systems, most of the practices uh, of the firm. Uh, so managers usually usually prefer incremental innovation rather than radical revolutionary innovation because it allows them to take it or to take the change step by step to be able to exercise more control over the change processes that emanate that come out or that are associated with uh, the innovative uh, changes. There is also a difference that we need to be cognizant of. A different, the difference between creativity, creativity and innovation. Creativity and innovation. Creativity is coming up with something new a new idea, a new method, a new concept, a new technique, a new feature. It's just an idea, just an idea. But when such an idea takes the implementation path, hmm? takes the root into implementation, it is called innovation. So innovation is implementing what has been created, implementing a new idea. So innovation focuses on implementation while creativity focuses on the generation of the new idea. Creativity and innovation both cannot play, take place at the individual level. It usually involves collaborative and interacting and cooperative activities that are synergized across a number of individuals or even a number of teams. So it is a collective endeavor. It is a collective uh, uh, action. Uh, it cannot be done uh, by one single uh, individual. An individual could come up with a new idea, but other individuals, when they get into the picture, they 
would modify, they would improve, they would add, uh, they would make it uh, more complete and so on in the process of implementation, that is innovation, you know, many different uh, uh, sets of teams or groups of individuals uh, have to collaborate and have to uh, share in, in contributing to uh, 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 the effective and successful uh, implementation of the idea that is innovation. In contemporary organizations, uh, the role of uh, information and communication technology is so great now. Uh, ICT uh, is an accelerator and an energizer and synergizer, energizer and synergizer at the same time uh, of creativity and innovation. They allow, they allow uh, people to be connected. For example, when you have intranet, uh, when you have a network of individuals who can communicate, who can share ideas, who can seek solutions to problems, who could test ideas across uh, uh, members of the team or members of the organization. Of course, uh, computer and communication uh, technologies uh, play a very important role in this regard. An important concept that is related also to innovation that has been suggested by an economist called Joseph Schumpeter. Joseph Schumpeter. An Austrian economist, Austrian economist, who suggested that uh, in the process of creating a new innovative system, the new system kicks out destroys, replaces the old system. This process is called creative destruction. Creative destruction. Creative destruction. It is a process through which something new, a new idea, a new system, a new technology, uh, new approaches, new discovery, hmm, brings about abolishment, destruction, or demise of whatever existed before it. It destroys the old system. It destroys, for example, the mobile communication technology has replaced the regular telephones that we used to have uh, or, and we still have, but we don't use it that much, the, uh, the, the, tele the regular telephones at home. Uh, the landlines, the, the so-called uh, landlines, telephonal arts, telephonal arts. Uh, any new system, when it comes, it kicks out, it destroys, it abolishes. It replaces the old, uh, the old system. This process may may take time. It doesn't happen, you know, uh, you know, so quickly or within a short time. It may it may take uh, maybe decades, decades for the new system. Uh, to totally replace, totally replace uh, the old uh, system. If 
the new innovation is limited. Is limited. It would not cause a total destruction, of course, in the old system. It will. It will replace a component. It re would replace a segment, an element of the old system. But the more the innovation is pervasive, is wide, is uh, you know covering you know large areas of uh, or elements of a system, uh, the more it will take a time to uh, repl totally replace uh, the old system. So the creative discussion process, the creative destruction process, the time it takes may vary depending on how wide, how deep, how total uh, is the change that is uh, being discovered or introduced uh, in whatever, in the product, in the technology, in, as, I, as I mentioned previously. Hmm? There is a cycle uh, usually in any uh, change, creative change in any domain, in any discipline, in any, in any area. And the discovery, creativity, innovation go through uh, cycle. Uh, the cycle, uh, it's like the product life cycle. We can also uh, call here uh, innovation life cycle. How long the innovation that is being introduced and utilized and stabilizes and, uh, and diminishes depending on the emergence of a new idea that is, that is turned into uh, creation and that is uh, translated into innovation uh, and implementation to replace the old. So it is sort of, you know, sets of cycles uh, that uh, the innovation or the domains go through, any domains, medical, uh, pharmaceutical, uh, communication, uh, technological, uh, whatever, whatever the domain uh, that we are talking about. All the activities and the elements of discovery, creativity, innovation, relate and depend greatly on human uh, competences. It is people who create and innovate. Machines don't. Machines don't. And even if we program uh, a certain program to come up with something new, it is the programming itself is an activity done by humans, by humans. So, uh, organizations who need to be innovative, need to invest in human competences, need to select well the personnel, the people who are hired, and it need to uh, uh, manage their capabilities and their competences and it need to invest in developing uh, continuously uh, such capabilities and such competences to maintain the ability of uh, human resources in the organization to continuously uh, be uh, creating and be uh, innovating. Okay. As an extent.
extension of the basic principles and concepts of innovation. Uh, let us focus now on the obstacles or the barriers of innovation, barriers to innovation. Factors that impede, that create problems, that slows down, that slow down, that make it difficult to introduce and to utilize uh, new ideas and to apply uh, uh, innovation. Hmm? One of the important set of barriers in this regard is the inability to create value out of innovation, out of applying the new method, the new ideas, the new technology, the new product. Why is that? Why is that? One, maybe the market, the consumers, are not ready. It is lack of readiness in the market. The market, in terms of purchasing capability, for example, of the consumers, the mindset of the consumers, the habits, the culture, ways of living, hmm? awareness, all these factors pertain to lack of readiness in the market. The second is alternative innovations, alternative new products, new technologies, new methods of doing things introduced by other firms, by competitors. If they are, if we think of doing something and we discover that our competitors were ahead of us, were before us, they have done this some time ago. So, what we will introduce may not be new in the market because our competitors have already uh, uh, done this and introduced such uh, a new product or such innovations. Hmm? Three difficulties associated with introducing organization change, the resistance, the inability of management or the people to uh, adapt and to comply and to uh, go with uh, any innovation uh, involved to a certain degree, either limited degree or to a large extent, uh, change in ways of doing things, change in network, change in behavior, change in, in, in skills, in competences. In. So due to that, people may resist, may resent resent such change. And if they don't see the change contributing to their benefits, contributing to their well-being, contributing to their income, contributing to their satisfaction, to their uh, happiness at work. Number four, lack of facilitating conditions to recognize, facilitate, and support innovative ideas. If the system of management doesn't provide the recognition for people who come up with new ideas, 
who come up with uh, important, useful uh, changes. If these people are not provided the, uh, the necessary incentives, the necessary rewards for what they contribute, of course, lack of, lack of recognition and lack of uh, incentives may get people to be hesitant to suggest to contribute, uh, to initiate uh, new ideas and new uh, uh, useful uh, changes. Organizational barriers also exemplified by rigidity lack of collaboration, absence of innovation in the strategic framework. If we go to, if we, we, we are all familiar with government or traditional bureaucratic government organizations. In these organizations, uh, the emphasis is on the bylaws, the rules the procedures, the standardized regulations, the uh, set of steps that people holding certain jobs have to uh, follow, have to, to do, have to abide by. These organizations are rigid, built in their system, in their ways of doing things, a great deal of rigidity. If, for example, the organization is characterized by lack of coordination, lack of cooperation, collaboration among the different uh, uh, units. And if the organization has not included innovation to be part of its strategic vision, strategic direction. So if innovation is not part of the strategic framework of the organization, of course, this, these various factors would constitute organizational uh, barriers. Number six is a very unique an interesting factor, very unique and interesting factor. Organizations that are highly successful, highly efficient, they have been doing what they are doing and making profit and growing and creating value through what they have been doing for quite some time. In such a case, success, efficiency, and the record of good results that the organization has been achieving over become in itself a barrier to introduce change because management would say in such a case, why introduce something that might be risky, that might involve uncertainty, that might involve change, that might require us to change our policies, our ways of doing things. So success and efficiency and the positive record over a long time uh, of performance might in itself, might in itself become a barrier, a factor that would get management to be hesitant, to resent introducing new ideas or to apply uh, uh, new changes in whatever they are doing. Number seven, 
the barriers that relate to the position of the organization in the market. If the organization, for example, has or, or occupies a monopolistic position in the market, it is a monopoly. These monopolistic conditions, monopoly means I'm the only one in the market. I'm the sole provider of this product or service. I'm controlling the price and the specifications of what I provide. I am the leader. It doesn't have to be full monopoly. It could be, you know, semi-monopoly. If I am a leader and there are smaller firms, but I am controlling uh, maybe or having 70% uh, of the market share, a great market share, uh, reflecting great power uh, on the part of the firm over the market, could become a barrier, a barrier, because the firm in this case may risk, may risk, in the minds of its management, of course, in the minds of its executives, of course, may risk its unique, powerful, monopolistic position if it would introduce innovative change in what it provides. It may not be a, sh it, 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 it could not assure, the firm or the management could not assure that they would maintain their previous position uh, and they may risk, they would be afraid uh, to introduce the innovation or the change uh, out of fear that they may lose a part of their market share, part of their power in, uh, in the market. Okay, I'll stop here and then I'll continue in the second lecture on managing innovation.